let's go ahead and come to our mats. Good morning. Happy Friday, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rachel Peters. I'm one of our physical therapists at our Palo Alto office, and I would love to welcome you all to Friday morning Pilates mat work. Um, we're going to be using a prop today. We're going to be using a foam roller, a styrofoam roller. Um, or if you don't have a roller, it's completely fine to either use a rolled up, vertically rolled up bath towel, something that's long enough that it can go from the crown of your head down towards your tailbone. Um, and again, if you don't have one of those handy, that's okay. We can um, simply be lying down on our mat. We're going to use the roller for part of our warm up exercises and we'll be lying flat on the mat. Um, so if you have one, great. If you don't have one, it's not going to impact your, your workout a whole heck of a lot. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to orient your mat or your towel or whatever you happen to be working out on right now. We're going to orient it horizontally. Make it so that it's facing the screen horizontally because I think that's going to be a little bit easier for you to see what we're doing today. And the roller is going to be oriented in the same direction on the center of your mat. To get started, we're going to go ahead and take a seat on your mat. If you're using a roller or a towel, let's get that, those sits bones right toward the bottom edge of your roller. We're gonna keep our knees bent and the feet pointing directly forward. Any knees, feet, and hips are all lined up with each other. And to safely get down onto that roller, we're gonna take our hands down to the mat, one on either side of that roller. And we're gonna slowly bend those elbows to get your forearms on the floor and then to get your head resting on that mat. You might need to adjust your hair a little bit if you feel like your ponytail is gonna poke into that roller if you have long hair. Once you're on that roller, just get used to being there for a minute. The roller and the mat, the roller and the towel, you wanna to try to feel what is contacting that surface. It's gonna be your tailbone, your sacrum, your middle back, the back of your head. You might have a little space where your neck rolls up. You might have a little space where your back comes up away from the mat. Those are okay. We're gonna respect those curves. We all have a little bit of a different orientation as far as how our spine is gonna to be touching the roller or your mat. We're gonna let the hands go by our sides. And let's just do a few little chin nods to warm up the back of the neck. Those arms can be resting comfortably wherever they are. Palms could be up or down. We're gonna gently nod the chin toward the neck. Just take a little nod, removing right from underneath those earlobes and that chin as it draws down, you're gonna feel a little bit of activity in those muscles under your throat. We're gonna let up on that nod. Nod and release a few times. Just feel in the back of that neck, lengthen a bit. We're gonna keep a little bit of that nod going and let's take the arms up to the ceiling. This changes your stability a little bit. If you need a little more stability here while those arms are up, you can take your feet out to the side a little farther. If you wanna challenge yourself a little bit, bring those feet together. Maybe bring your knees together. It does make a bit of a difference as far as your base there. We're gonna go from here with those elbows straight. We're gonna reach those shoulder blades up to the ceiling and down to the floor. Lift and lower, like you're wrapping those shoulder blades around the front of your body to reach forward. Lower them down. We'll do a couple more here. You might feel some little crunches under your shoulder blades. That's okay. Almost should feel like you're giving yourself a little massage whether you're, whether you're on a roller, a towel, or on the mat. We'll drop those blades down to the floor and let's take the arms back overhead. Take them back as far as you comfortably can. Maybe your thumbs touch the floor. Maybe they only come up part way toward that back corner. It's okay. You want to feel some length from your pinky all the way down towards your hip, potentially. Most of that stretch is going to be in the underarms. Let's take those arms forward and back a few times. Try to focus on keeping the rest of the body nice and still. If you're feeling too wobbly, it is a little bit early in the morning, so we could keep one hand on the floor and work one side at a time as well. We're going to do one more time back and forth with one arm or both arms. And then we're gonna take those arms down to the mat in front of you. We're gonna flip those palms so they face the ceiling. Let's take a breath in and exhaling. We're gonna think about drawing your collarbones away from the middle of the body. Like you're spreading them right away from that sternum out to the sides. You'll feel some work being done maybe in the backs of the shoulders, maybe where they fold over that roller or press into your towel or floor. 
You might feel a little stretch through the chest. We're gonna hold that here and hover the hands up off the mat. Let's flip those palms down toward the floor and then flip those palms up toward the ceiling. Just getting a little rotation through those shoulder joints. Bring in a little bit of blood and nutrition to those areas. Gentle movements. The pace is gonna be whatever's working for you. We're gonna flip those palms toward the ceiling again and let the backs of the hands rest down onto the floor. We're gonna rock gently side to side. You might feel your core wake up a little bit. You might feel those small muscles in your feet wake up a little bit as you challenge your base. If you're on the mat itself and not on a towel or a roller, feel free to let your knees wiggle side to side a little bit. We'll take ourselves right back to the middle and we're gonna place our hands right on our bellies, right between the pubic bone and that um, navel. And right in the middle there, we're gonna picture a clock face from the sternum, 12 o'clock, to the pubic bone, six o'clock. Side to side is three to nine. We're gonna rock the pelvis back and forth along those clock face numbers. We're gonna go 12 o'clock, shortening the pubic bone toward the breastbone. We're gonna go six o'clock, lengthening the pubic bone away from the breastbone. Let's rock back and forth between those two positions. Noticing you'll get a little more flattening and then a little more arching as that pelvis tips. Try to keep the motion through the lower half of your body. That chin should be nice and still as you rock through those two positions. We'll take ourselves right back to neutral. And then let's find three o'clock and nine o'clock. Those hands can come to your hips so your fingertips are pointing up toward the ceiling. We're gonna rock one hip up toward the ceiling, following what my hand is doing. And then we're gonna rock the other hip up toward the ceiling as that first hip comes down. Keep on rocking from three o'clock to nine o'clock. You'll feel your glutes and hamstrings doing a little bit of work here. That's okay, they're working to stabilize you. We'll rock one more time on each side and then take it right back to the middle. From here, we'll take one more big breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna tighten the seat belts of muscles between that pubic bone and the breastbone. The goal here is to keep that pelvis nice and still. If you started with the curve, you end with the same curve there but those belly muscles are drawing down gently, bringing your navel towards your spine. At the same time, your spine is gently lifting towards your navel. So we're just giving ourselves a little compression in that forward and back direction for stability. Holding there, we're gonna turn those palms toward the floor if they're not already there. We're gonna press the hands into the floor for a little support, maintaining that navel to spine. We're gonna march one knee up to 90 degrees and back down, and then the other, and back down. Let's keep that march going. If you want to challenge it a little bit, or maybe even a lot more, those hands can lift up off the floor. Whether you're on your roller, your towel, or your exercise surface by itself, that belly's staying down. And we're using those core muscles. We're almost thinking of using your core to lift your legs. Your legs are like little weights, or big weights as the case may be there's a decent sized lever between your heel and your hip there. And you should feel these muscles right here staying active as we continue to march. We're gonna lift one more time on each side. We'll take both feet back down to the floor. With the hands down to the floor, we're gonna take a big breath in. Exhaling, press your heels into the floor. Squeeze those glutes. Lift those glutes up a few inches so you can rise up toward a bridge and then control ourselves back down to that roller, the mat or the towel. Press it up and lower it back down. Press it up, maybe you get up tall enough that you feel a little stretch through the front of the thighs. If not, press a little more firmly with your arms and lower back down. We're just warming up the lower half of the body right now so that height doesn't need to be quite what it'll be when we work on these a little bit later on our mats. Last one here, press it up, lower it down, and we'll rock a little bit more through our pelvic clock, 12 to six. Back to the center, we'll rock from three to nine, holding that hip down along your roller, your towel, or pressing it into the floor. We'll take it back to the middle with those abdominals still active, drawing gently through the belly to pull it back. We're gonna take those arms back up to the ceiling, and warm up our oblique muscles on the sides. Arms come to the ceiling, keeping that belly down. We could take that arm closest to your screen, bring it out to the side, maybe to the point of stretch. 
We'll sweep back up and the arm a little farther away from your screen comes back out to the side and we take it back up. We're going to alternate side to side a few times. We're warming up the muscles on the side opposite to the hand that's moving. Those muscles are working to stabilize you, keep you nice and still on your mat or your roller as we move those arms. We're going to go one more time to each side. Lifting up, out to the side, lifting up. We'll take those arms down by our sides. So let's roll gently off of your towel or your roller onto your mat. We'll push that roller or towel out of your way. And we'll come to the floor. If you've been on your mat or your roller, you might feel like you're, or excuse me, on your roller or your towel, you might feel like you're laying in a little bit of a hole. We got those paraspinal muscles along the edges of your spine stretched out a little bit with our starting exercises. Now from here, we're gonna gently draw the chin down toward the neck again. We're gonna gently draw the belly down toward the spine. We're gonna move one knee up to 90 degrees and take the other knee up to meet it in tabletop. From here, we wanna to try to maintain that navel to spine. If it's a hard for you to get that belly and keep it down, feel free to bring a foot down for a kickstand. With both knees up or one knee up, we're gonna take the hands to the front of our thighs, press those hands and thighs toward each other. Give a little pressure and counter it. Hold it there. You want to press enough that you start to feel some muscles working from those lowest ribs down towards your pubic bone. Hold it there. We're going to take some breaths here while maintaining that general navel to spine connection. If you want to build on this, you could nod your chin and lift the head up off the floor. The shoulder blades are staying down. We're just lifting from the front muscles in the throat. We're going to gently straighten and bend the knees. Find the barrier through the backs of the legs. That first point when you feel like your knees don't want to straighten anymore, use that as your limit. Again, the head could be down or up. We're just loosening up the backs of the legs, letting them know they're going to be working for us in a little bit. One more time, we're going to lift up to that barrier. We're going to flex and point the toes a little bit. Loosen up those far ends of those limbs. We're going to point the toes, bring them back to 90 degrees to start and take those hands down the fire sides, hovering them in line with our trunk. We could lift the head if you want, maybe lifting those shoulder blades up a bit, and we're gonna pat the hands up and down like we're bouncing little tiny basketballs, reaching those fingertips toward the wall in front of us. If you wanna straighten your legs out, find that barrier, go ahead and do so. We're inhaling, two, three, four, five, and exhale. Keep that pattern going. Varying it a little bit, we can increase the challenge on those abdominals by taking those legs forward. We can have a kickstand now if you need a little bit of assistance to keep that back nice and still. We can have one leg completely down if you need a kickstand but still want to get a little stretch. Lots of options. Inhale and exhale. Breathe it in, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, five. Keep that going. And exhale. Flip those palms over, press the air to the ceiling, same thing. Maybe we challenge that abdominal area a little more, and exhale. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, and out. And in, two, three, four, five, last exhale. Hold it there. Draw those knees back to tabletop. We're gonna roll the upper body down, keeping those hands covered off the floor. Let's just take our heads and turn them side to side. We'll draw the head back to the middle, nod the chin gently toward the neck. Keeping that navel to spine, we're going to keep that leg farthest from the screen, right at tabletop. And we're going to press the opposite leg. The leg closest to your screen is going to press out forward. We'll draw it back to tabletop and then switch and press. Let's move through here at your own speed, challenging it further by taking those arms up to the ceiling, by taking those arms back overhead, possibly. Maybe you lift the head up, whether your hands are overhead, at the ceiling, or hovered down by the sides. Let's pull those knees back to tabletop. We're going to draw the far knee close into your chest, straighten the leg closest to your screen down to the mat. We'll take the upper body down to the floor. That bent knee is going to come side to side. We're going to wiggle it a little bit, pulling into the side of that far hip, giving that glute a little bit of a Stretch, a little bit of a wake up. We'll pull it back to the center and then holding on to the front of your shin, 
for the back of your shin, if that doesn't feel great on the front of your shin. We're going to hold the elbows soft. We're going to curl the upper body up potentially. If the head's down, that chin stays down. And we'll take that straight leg, lifting it up off the floor, paint that horizontal line on the wall in front of you, keeping the rest of your body as still as you can. We'll do one more line side to side, bring it back to the middle, hold it there. We're going to straighten that far leg that's been bent up toward the ceiling. And with the head up or with the head down, that straight leg closest to the floor is going to come down and touch the mat. And then we use those abdominals to lift it up off the mat. We're going to control it down, control it up. Again, that head could be lifted. Last time, lift that foot. We're going to keep that foot hovered up off the floor. Bring the upper body down if it's been up. And the arms come to the ceiling. We drop those blades down to the floor. With that pelvis staying nice and still on the floor, we're going to take the leg reaching toward the ceiling and move it side to side. Find a range where you can keep both cheeks on the floor and the back of your pelvis, right? Those little dimples in the back of your spine, those are staying nice and still as well. We can move through some circles. Stretch those toes up to the ceiling. Try to keep those circles in a range where you really feel like your hip is staying nice and solid as it orients into your pelvis. Try to keep it, keep it from clicking, popping. Go ahead and circle the other direction. It's not going to harm you if it makes noise, but the more you can keep it nice and connected, the more you're going to be working that core. We're going to hold that leg up to the ceiling. Hang on behind that thigh. Give it a little stretch, just a tiny bit closer to you if you can. If you want to raise your upper body, you can do that as well. And we're going to kick the back of that knee into your hand, maybe curling up a little bit farther. And we'll curl ourselves back down. Kick into the hand, curl it up. Kick into the hand, curl it down. Keep that motion going. You are always welcome to kick into the hand without lifting your head. We're keeping the navel to the spine so that core is still working, whether your, heart, your upper body is lifting or not. We're going to lower one more time. We're going to bend that knee, pull it right back into the chest, and we'll switch it up for our other side. That leg closest to the screen comes in. We slide that opposite leg out straight, drop it down to the floor, and we'll pull that near leg over across your body a little bit, getting into that hip. Give that glute a little stretch. If you get any pinching at the front of your hip, you're always welcome to bring that leg down a little bit lower to keep it out of the groin and more into the outside of the hip. We're gonna pull that leg back to the middle. Hold it there, hang on either at your shin or at the back of your knee. And maybe we draw the belly down again to reset that core. Maybe we curl up the body. We lift that straight leg a couple inches off the floor and then take it side to side. Let it make its horizontal line in the wall in front of you. And we're trying to keep that pelvis and trunk nice and still. Try not to let it go along for the ride as that leg moves. You have your hand right above and your core right above that bent leg. You're going to feel those muscles stay active to try and keep you still. We'll bring them back to the middle. Hold it there. Straighten that leg up a bit. Get into that hamstring a little bit. You can flex and point. We can pause there with the head down if you felt like you needed to do, do a little wiggle and stretch out that leg more. We can control that leg that's closest to the floor using the abdominals. Take it down, lift it up. Again, whether the head is down or up, you're using those lower abs to control what that leg is doing. Hold it there. Take the upper body down, arms to the ceiling, and we'll take that leg toward the ceiling and move it side to side. Pressing the bones in the back of the pelvis into the floor. Maybe that other leg's covered up off the floor. It could also be down at the mat. It could also be bent a little bit for a little more support. The leg that's moving is also straight just to that barrier point that we talked about when we were moving early on. Let's make some circles. We could vary our arm position a little bit for different challenge. It could be down by your side. Let's do three more circles the other way. We'll bring that leg to the top, hang on behind your thigh, and drop those shoulders and the belly down. We're going to kick the back of that leg into your hands. 
maybe rolling up a little before controlling it back down to the mat. Kick into the hands, decide if you're gonna roll up. Take it back down. Let's do three more here. Kick, maybe roll. Take it back down. Last two. And down. Last one, kick. Control it back down. We'll keep a hold behind that thigh, bring that knee to the tabletop. Bring the other knee to the tabletop to meet it. And let your thighs rest on your hands. We can keep those elbows straight as we let the thighs rest on the hands and we rock side to side. Coming back to the middle, we'll take those arms down by our sides, press your shoulder blades down, and we're gonna straighten those knees up. Again, finding that barrier where you first start to feel some resistance from your hamstrings. We'll hold those legs there. That belly draws down. We might have a little bit more of a flat back than we did with those knees bent. And we're gonna take both legs together and draw a line on the ceiling. We're gonna bring those feet towards your screen and away from your screen. Keep that pattern going. Maybe we hover the hands up off the mat. It's okay if the bones in the back of the pelvis lift up a little bit as we rock side to side. We're using our trunk muscles to control that motion. We're gonna make some circles with those legs. Move them together. If you wanna make this more challenging, you could open up that hip angle a little bit. Bring those feet a little closer to where the wall in front of you is. We're gonna circle the other way. Again, modify your hip angle if you need to. Either bringing them a little closer to the ceiling or maybe taking them farther forward. We're gonna take both legs back up to the ceiling, knees to your barrier, and we're gonna move those legs in circles in opposite directions of each other. So we have one going clockwise, one going counterclockwise. Those arms could be at the ceiling, and we can reverse it as well. Let's do two more here. If your knees are bent, it's gonna almost feel like a reverse breaststroke or a breaststroke. We'll take those legs back to the ceiling. We'll take those arms down by the sides and we're gonna flutter kick the legs a little bit. Little tiny scissor kicks. Maybe we keep the belly down and we open up that angle a little bit, drawing them down, drawing them back up. We can cross the feet over each other if you want. Same thing, we're gonna bring those legs down a bit and up a bit. And as always, it's fine for the legs to be bent. It's fine for them to stay right up in that tabletop position with little pistons. We're gonna do a couple more times back and forth. Exhale as you come down. Inhale as you come back up. One more time, exhale as you come down. Inhale as we come up. We're gonna pull those knees into the chest, give them a hug and rock everything side to side. Let's take everything back to the middle. We're gonna roll their shoulders back and down. Take the hands down to the sides. Bring those legs back to tabletop and those arms back up to the ceiling. We're gonna flex the feet. We're pulling the toes toward the kneecap here. We're gonna drop those blades down, drop that belly down, keeping the knees bent. We're gonna nice and slowly control those heels down toward the floor as the knees come forward. We'll inhale back up to the top. Exhale, control them down. Inhale back up to tabletop. Exhale, control down. We could add an overhead raise with the arms to increase that challenge. Inhale, lift them up. Exhale, lift them forward and front, arms up and back. Take them back up. We could change this up a little bit and straighten the knees, either all the way or just a bit more if you'd like. And again, we take those legs forward, maybe bringing the arms back and we take them back up to the ceiling. Exhale forward, inhale up, last two, exhale forward, inhale up, last time, exhale forward, inhale up. We pull back to tabletop, we're gonna bring those feet back down to the mat, arms down by the sides for pelvic clock. Give that core a little bit of a breather, we'll rock forward back 12 to six. We'll take it back to neutral and rock that pelvis from three o'clock to nine o'clock. We'll take it right back to the middle, drawing that belly toward the spine, hold it there. Let's drop those shoulder blades to the floor. 
And we're gonna look where your heels are. We're gonna try to line our heels up with our sit bones with a few inches between. So your lower leg should actually be pretty close to vertical here, not going too far past, but also not having them too far in front of us. From here, we're gonna press those heels into the floor, take a big breath in and we're gonna bridge up. Exhale, pressing those heels through the floor, taking those knees toward the wall in front of you. Hold them there. Big breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna bridge ourselves back down. Let's take it up and down at your own speed. Focusing on feeling those glutes working as we stretch through the front of the thighs a bit. We'll lift it up and lower down. We're gonna hold this next bridge up at the top. Hold it at the point where you feel that leg through the front of the thighs. Now we're gonna rotate the hips. We're gonna take the hip closest to your screen, lower it toward the floor, leaving the other one right up where it is. We'll take it back up and switch. And lift, rotate, lift up, rotate, lift up. One more time to each side. Your hip comes down and lifts. Far hip comes down and lifts. Let's take a big breath in here. We'll exhale down, bringing that tailbone to the floor before we take a big breath in to prepare for our next series. Breathe in at the bottom, readjusting your feet if you need to. Exhale, let's bridge it back up, holding it up at the top. Now we're gonna lift those heels. We're gonna lift up onto the toes and then bring those heels back down. Try to keep your hips lifted even as those knees come down. If you need a little assist, you're welcome to have your hands right at your hips. Let's give them a little support. You can also have the hands in front, or you can bring them up to the ceiling. See how that feels. We can lift one heel at a time, working a little bit more on rotation stability and maybe a little stretch through the front of that hip. We're going to bring both heels down, take an inhale, and bridge it down again. Let's take those knees into the chest for a brief little stretch here. Rock them side to side a bit. We'll take those feet back down to the back. Knees are going to stay bent. Take an inhale. On the exhale, we're going to bridge up again. We could either revisit our rotation or move to a march. Working the same muscles, we a little bit different way. We're going to press that near foot, the foot closest to your screen, into the floor. Lift that other one up and down and switch it with the goal as you march being to keep your pelvis facing the ceiling. Those hip bones are going to stay level with each other as best you can. We can extend a leg toward the ceiling as we march. We can add a little leg lift to increase the time on that standing leg. Move it through at your own speed. Remembering a straight bridge is completely fine here. Bridging with rotation. Marching with a bent knee. Let's press that last foot into the floor. Take one more big breath into the top. We'll exhale, bridging down for a little pelvic clock before we move into our last in the bridge series. We're moving through 12 to six. We'll take it back to neutral. Let's move from three to nine. Take it back to neutral. Let's take those knees toward your screen and away. Just giving that low back a little bit of a chance to rotate through a comfortable range. We'll take those knees back up to the ceiling and the foot farthest away from your screen is gonna cross over towards your near knee. You can rest that ankle on your knee if you feel like you might need a little bit of stability work with that leg. We're gonna press that supporting heel into the floor and lift up into single leg bridge. Once you're here, decide if you want assistance from that foot or we can bring it up to tabletop. Either way, we're gonna try some single leg bridging. We might lift up only an inch off the floor, that's okay. Think about pressing that foot down and slightly forward into your mat to get into your glute. The heel is doing the work, that'll keep it out of your hamstring. Last one here, bridge it down and we'll make the switch. That other foot comes down. We cross the ankle to the opposite knee. Press through that heel bridging up. Decide where you want that, supported, that unsupported leg. And we're gonna press down and up through that far foot. You can 
always have that other leg extended toward the ceiling. You could even stretch it forward a bit if you wanted to change it up a little. Last one, lower, lift, and lower. We're gonna cross one leg over the other, pull those knees into the chest. We're gonna rock the body side to side. We're just trying to open up the hip a little bit. If the stretch doesn't feel great for you, go ahead and bring that foot down. You're welcome to pull the knees right into your chest. We'll take a couple breaths. Let's go ahead and switch it up, other side. Find the leg position that's working for you. Pull into that glute a bit, maybe rock it side to side. Let's take it back to the middle, unwind. Pull those knees to the chest one more time. We'll take the legs to the floor. All right, wiggle around a little bit. Let your low back sink down to the mat. And we're gonna straighten out the knees. And if you can keep your legs straight, great. If you need to bend them up, no problem at all. You want to keep the pressure off your low back. From here, just like we did at the beginning of class when we were on the rollers of the towel, we're going to take those arms to the ceiling. Draw your chin gently down towards your neck. Maintaining a little bit of that chin nod, we're going to reach those hands up to the ceiling, down to the mat. Reach them up, lower them down. Reach them up, lower them down. We're going to take the arms halfway back to the wall behind you. So maybe where the wall and the ceiling meet behind you. Keep your hands right there. Try to keep them right where they are. Try not to let them move. Keeping those hands still overhead. Again, we're going to take those shoulder blades and wrap them up forward toward the ceiling and lower them back down. Forward and back. They won't move as much as they did when the hands were toward the ceiling. We're working a little bit more upward rotation versus pure coming forward here. Lift. And lower, last time, lift, lower those blades down. From here, keeping those arms still, we're gonna draw your chin gently down toward the neck for a little nod, keeping the back of the head on the floor. We're gonna draw that breastbone gently down toward the mat. Let that lower part of your breastbone fold down just a bit, anchoring your mid back into your mat. We're gonna take those lowest ribs and do the same thing. They're gonna draw down to the floor and slightly in toward each other. You feel your upper abdominals working a bit here. And then that navel draws in toward the spine. Hold those connections. Move your arms up toward the ceiling and back toward the wall behind you, maintaining those connections. Particularly think about your mid back, try to keep that mid back pressing into the floor. We're gonna take those arms back as far as you can, maintaining those connections now. And then from here, turn your kneecaps so they face the ceiling if they were out to the side a bit. We're going to lift up one foot and lower it down, and then the other. Keep that walking pattern moving. If your knees are bent, it's going to look like a march. If you want to make this more challenging, as one leg comes down, you could bring the other one up. Regardless of what position you've chosen, we're going to bring those arms up toward the ceiling. Keeping those legs moving for a second here. Feet are gonna come down. We're gonna stretch those arms back overhead one more time for a big breath in and a big breath out. One more time, take a big breath in and exhale. And we're gonna make our way over to our stomachs. and rest here. If you historically aren't super comfortable on your stomach, feel free to find a small towel or a, a cushion, something that you can put, maybe a soft pillow that you could put between your ribs and your pubic bone. Sometimes that'll help make it a little more comfortable to be lying in your stomach. To give your low back a little bit more room, you could bring your feet out to the side, one to each of the outer edges of your mat, or they can be together, it's up to you. Once you're here, wiggle around, Find a position that feels best. And we're gonna draw that belly gently up towards your spine. Keep in mind, like I always say, it's fine if your skin touches the floor. We just wanna feel the muscles above the skin working. From here, if you can maintain that navel to spine connection, float your forehead up off of your hands. Hold them there. The tops of your feet are still resting on the floor. See if you can challenge it further by maintaining navel to spine keeping the forehead lifted up off your hands. And now we raise the forearms up. So the forehead 
and hands come in contact with each other again. If you can hold that here, maybe we challenge it a little bit more by taking these arms back by your sides and flipping your palms so they face the floor. If you want to build on that one, we take the arms out to the sides. And if we want to challenge it further, those thumbs rotate up toward the ceiling, we bring those arms overhead. We can move back and forth through a jumping jack position with those arms. We could take them just a couple inches out from the sides. You decide, it's how your mobility through your shoulders, mobility through your upper back, and your ability to keep that navel pulled in will help you decide. All right, we're gonna go ahead and bring those hands back under the forehead. We're gonna squeeze the bottom, lift the legs, and do a little flutter kick. If your upper body needs a break, that head can come right back down as you flutter kick those legs. You wanna take it farther? Hands are reaching down by your sides. They could come out to your sides. They could come up overhead and move in opposition with your legs for a little swimming here. We're gonna bring those arms back down by the sides and click your heels together. If your knees are bent, that's okay. You look like this. Click, 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 click. Let's bring those feet down. Draw that belly in a little farther. And with the palms facing the floor, we're going to squeeze your blades together, send your breastbone slightly toward the wall in front of you, and pulse those hands up and down for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Big breath in. On the exhale, we'll press up to hands and knees, and we'll rock back and forth a bit. Take the bottom back toward the heels, and then come up nice and tall. Take them back, and pull them up tall. Let's do a couple more here. Easing into that hands and knees position. If you do need more padding for your knees, feel free to double your mat. Bring your knees up a little higher on it for a little more padding. Coming back up to hands and knees, we're going to shift the weight towards your screen and away. Push the floor away with your hands. We can also make some little circles around our base of support. If you had something balanced at the small of your back when you're right in the middle, you want to keep that back nice and still. Try not to spill it or move it. And we'll circle the other direction, keeping that balance through that lower back and pelvis. We're going to come back up to hands and knees. We'll do a couple cats and cows just to curl and uncurl. We'll take ourselves back to a neutral position and wag your tail side to side, hip to shoulder. Take it right back to the middle here. Look over one shoulder and over the other. Make sure your neck feels like it's in a relatively easy position for you. If you need a little assistance, think about drawing that chin back towards your neck slightly. And we're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades together behind the back and then unsqueeze them, press them forward. Squeeze the blades back towards your spine and then press them forward toward the floor. Keep that pattern going. If you want a bigger challenge, take the hand closest to your screen, lift it up to your thigh and press through that bar hand. We're pressing through the heel of the hand. So the majority of the work is being done right in front of your armpit. We can bring that other hand down, switch them up so that near side is controlling the motion. Squeeze the blade towards your spine, press the blade forward. It's like a little mini push up for your shoulder blade. Keeping those elbows nice and straight. Last two. Last one. Take that second hand down. The near hand is going to come out towards your screen. We'll look over your shoulder if you can, and then we'll thread the needle. Reach it through between your other hand and your knee, reaching toward the wall. Take it up and out. Thread it through. Up and out. Thread it through. Last time on that near side, we'll thread it through. We'll take ourselves back to hands and knees and repeat with that far arm. Arm comes out towards your wall and then stretches towards your screen. Reach it up and out, stretch it through. Last two. Last one. Stretch, take it right back up to hands and knees. And up on hands and knees, let's roll our shoulders back and down a few times. Just make a couple circles here. 
We'll come back up to all fours. And from here, we're gonna take one leg back behind you and one arm up in front. And move through here at your own speed. Keep it going. Find your balance point. If you need a bigger challenge, we come up into plank. We move either one leg at a time, one arm at a time, or we take an opposite arm and leg. If you're in the plank position, try to keep your bottom down. We don't want it lifted up toward the ceiling. We're trying to keep this controlled by your abdominals and those shoulder blade muscles. All right, back down to all fours if you've been up in plank. Give your wrists a little bit of a breather, either way. And from all fours, we're gonna go ahead and take those forearms down to the mat. The head's below your hips, and I've said this before, but if you're not comfortable in this position, for the next set of exercises, you're welcome to keep your head up as well. If you're down on all fours, you can take one fist and put it on top of the other. If your head needs a little extra support, just rest your forehead on your fists. From here, we're gonna press those forearms into your mat, Slide out the leg closest to your screen. Slide it back behind you. And we're gonna lift that straight leg up and down. Try as best you can to keep that motion in the hip joint. And to keep that core nice and still. Hold that leg up in the air. Take it side to side. Draw a line on the wall behind you. Stretch that leg back, bend the knee to 90 degrees. We'll control that knee down to the mat and then press it back up. Lower and lift. One more time, lower, lift it up and pulse your heel to the ceiling for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take that leg back down. We'll slide that leg farthest from your screen out behind you. Reset your upper body if you need a little more support through your forearms. And we'll take that straight leg up and down. We'll hold it up there and take it side to side. Stretch it straight back, bend that knee to 90 degrees. And we'll control that knee down and lift. Lower and lift. Lower, lift. Last time, lift and pulse, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take it back down, bring your bottom down towards your heels. Bring it through a comfortable range, maybe stretch those arms forward toward the front of your mat. You can drop that forehead down. You can also take your knees apart from each other a little bit if that's more comfortable. Take a few breaths here. One more time, inhale. And exhale, we'll drop those forearms to the floor. Take your upper body forward over those forearms. And we're gonna take the legs back behind the body, resting on your upper thighs. That navel's pulled up toward the spine, so we're pressing up through those shoulder blades. We're gonna bend that knee or knee, the leg closest to your screen, kick your bottom. Straighten out and switch. Keep in mind that you can feel free to bend your knee as much or as little as feels appropriate. We're trying to keep the pelvis nice and still. So if the front of your thighs are feeling really tight, the more you bend, the more you might come into that low back. So try to keep that back nice and still. Last two, last one. Both knees bend together for three, and down. Bend two, bend one. Take those legs down. We're gonna push up a little higher onto those thighs. We could push up into a plank on the knees, or we could push up into a full forearm plank. Regardless, we're going to shift the weight from forearm to forearm for four, three, two, one. We'll take them back to the middle, take those knees down. We'll come back up to all fours for just a couple of cats and cows to reset. We'll take it back to neutral, wag the tail from side to side, reset in that direction. We'll come back to the middle, and we're going to make our way into long sitting. Those legs will be out over the front of your mat just a little bit and out to the side so we're in a little narrow V with those legs. The goal here is to be up as tall on your sit bones as you can. If you feel like you're slouching, bend your knees up. They could even be turned out to the side a little bit. We're 
going to hold our upright position. Take those arms up, lining your fingers up with the center of your foot. So they're going to be over your second and third toes. And from here, we're going to pull that belly in gently and hinge back and forth. Just a couple of times. We'll hinge forward, take the hands to the legs, let them rest wherever they end up. We're going to take the hands to the leg closest to your screen and take that arm and open it up. Maybe we look over the shoulder if there's still room in the system to get a little bit of rotation. If the rotation's just not happening, hold your hands at that far leg, maybe even just opening up that arm a little bit. We'll sweep through one more time to each side. And we'll sweep away from that screen. We'll take it back to the middle, come up nice and tall, bending up those knees. All right, we're gonna hold on to those thighs like you're holding a beach ball with soft elbows. We'll flex and point. Let your body weight translate forward and back a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is see if we can balance with those feet lifted off the floor. If that's not working, bring your toes or your heels back down. If you wanna challenge that balance a little further, take those arms out to the sides and we'll do some leg raises. If your toes are down, heels are down, it's fine. You can lift from the floor. If you want to challenge it further, both legs come together, up and down. You could take those arms up, bringing them parallel to your thighs. We're going to bring those feet down to the floor again. Come up nice and tall for a little cat-cow reset. We'll come back to our neutral position. We'll take those arms to the outsides of your knees. So my wrists and my outsides of my knees are pressing against each other now. I'm gonna take that hand closest to my screen, bring it out to the side, follow it over with my head. I'll sweep it back to the middle and then switch it up. Remember you can vary your angle for a little bit different challenge. So if you need to take some pressure off your abdominals a little bit, come up straighter. You're still gonna feel those abs as you press into your legs. You can angle back a little farther. You could even lift your feet up if you wanted to challenge it a little bit differently. We'll take it back to the middle. Come up nice and tall. Lining up your heels with your sit bones, we're gonna take the hands behind the body. Keep those elbows straight. So if your hands need to be facing, your fingertips need to be facing out to the side to let you do that, that's okay. With your elbows straight, see if you can squeeze your blades together behind your back. If you still have room, you could wiggle those bottoms a little bit farther forward away from your fingertips. And from here, we're gonna send that breastbone up toward where the wall and the ceiling meet in front of you. Hold it there. Take some breaths, feeling your chest open up a little bit as you inhale, and then pressing a little more into that floor with your exhale. If you wanna take this further, feet come a little closer to your bottom. We come up toward a reverse tabletop. We could challenge the hamstrings a bit by straightening out those knees, lifting up. We're gonna hold whatever position we're in now for one more breath in. We'll exhale, bring that bottom down. Shake out your wrists. We're gonna turn and sitting toward your screen. Okay. Wiggle those wrists in little circles. Bend and straighten your elbows a bit. And then roll those shoulders back and down. All right, we're gonna do cross leg sitting for our next series here, a very short series of side bending. If you need a cushion to sit on or if it doesn't feel great to sit cross-legged, feel free to stand up briefly to do this part of it. We're gonna take those arms out to the sides, take a big breath in, and we'll side bend, bringing the forearm into your side, opposite arm overhead, and let's keep that going. Side bend up. And side bend, take it back up. We're gonna roll those shoulders back, pulse your shoulder blades together for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Big breath in, exhale, arms down. And we're gonna make our way up to kneeling. Let's hold ourselves up here. We're gonna take those arms forward and shift the weight back, hold it there. Let's open up one arm to the side, follow it, take it back to the center and switch it up and center. Open it up and center. Last one. 
and center. We'll come up nice and tall, flip those palms forward, take the hands back. We're gonna squeeze those pinkies together for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold them back there for a big breath in. Exhale, arms down. And we're gonna take one leg straight out to the side. We're gonna come up nice and tall. And we're gonna hinge the body forward, taking the tailbone back. Come up nice and tall. We'll hinge. Take it up. Last one. Take it up. Arms come out to the side. We'll side bend toward that bent knee and take it up and over toward our straight knee. We'll side bend and take it up. One more time here, side bend and take it up and over. Come up nice and tall and we'll switch those legs. Straighten out that opposite side. Come up nice and tall. And from here, we're gonna hinge. Crown of the head forward, tailbone back. Take it up tall. Hinge it forward. Take it up. Last one here. Take it up. Arms out to the side. Come up nice and tall through the crown of your head and we'll side bend toward that bent knee. And lift it up and over. Last two. And lift. And last one. And lift. Stretching it over. We'll come up nice and tall. And we're going to make our way down to our side. And we'll lie down here. Bending up those knees, heels lining up with your sit bones. We're going to press that top arm into the floor and raise those knees, keeping the feet down. Take them up and down, lowering those knees down. We're going to take the feet to the ceiling. With the feet pressed together, that top knee comes up and down. Try to keep your pelvis stacked. Top hip right on top of your bottom hip. Knees and feet both come down. We keep that top knee bent, the bottom leg straightens out. Press that bottom leg into the floor as we press the top toes into the bottom knee. See if you can take that arm up to the ceiling. We'll control that knee down and lift it up. Last two. Last one, straighten out that top leg. We're gonna take that top foot back, touch it behind the toes and bottom leg, and we'll lift it up and take it forward. Back and forth. Hold that top leg up there, we'll circle it. Keep in mind, you could have that top hand down. We're gonna reverse that circle. Hold it up there, bottom leg comes up. We're gonna take them down and up together. Last four, three, two, one. Hold them there, take them down, pat that hip out. And we're gonna come up and take it over to our other side. Line those heels up with our sit bones. Top hand comes down for support. And we'll bring those knees up and down, keeping the rest of the body as still as you can. We'll take those knees down, lift the feet up, check that your pelvis is stacked and that top knee comes up and down. We could take that top arm to the ceiling. Let's control those feet down to the floor. Keep that arm up if you can, straighten the bottom leg out and press it into the mat. With those top toes pressed into your bottom leg, we'll take that knee down and up. Last two. Last one. Take that top leg, straighten it out, and we'll touch the top toes down behind the bottom leg and take them up and touch them in front. Back and forth. Last two. Last one. Hold it up there and circle. Other direction. 
Hold them up there, bring that bottom leg up. We'll take them down and up. Last set, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold, big breath in. Take them down, pat that hip out. And we're gonna move to hands and knees to make our way up to standing. Once we're on hands and knees, we could do a couple of cats and cows here. We could wag the tail side to side. Let's take them back to the middle. We could move through a plank, maybe shifting our weight side to side. We could come back to the center, moving through a couple of push-ups if you feel like you're needing that. We can come up through an inverted V or down dog position, elbows and ears line up. We can drop those heels down to the floor, maybe pedaling out those ankles a little bit. Drop both heels down to the floor, take a big breath in. Exhale. Then we're gonna walk those feet up toward our hands. Give yourself a stable base of support. Feet lined up with your hips. We're gonna draw that belly up toward the ceiling and fold ourselves up to standing nice and tall. Once you're upright, we're gonna be practicing some balancing. If you need to find a wall, a countertop, a sofa side, or a chair, something steady to hold onto, you're welcome to find that now. If you wanna stand on your mat or your towel, it'll give you a little more challenge, a little more uh, stuff for your feet to press into. You could also stand just straight on your floor. We're gonna line our heels up with our sit bones, stand up nice and tall, and picture that string at the crown of your head pulling you up nice and tall toward the ceiling. Keeping that height, we're gonna shift the weight gently toward the toes and toward the heels. We're keeping the whole foot on the ground as we do this. Maybe gently drawing that belly back toward the spine. Let's try to line ourselves up so our center of gravity is right over the front of the ankle joints now. Hold it there. We're going to lift up those toes, spread them apart, take them down one at a time, starting with your pinky toe. Try a few. Lift and lower. It gets easier the more you practice. It's kind of hard to get some of those toes moving independently initially. We're going to press those toes into the floor. Shift the weight forward toward the balls of the feet. See if you can unweight your heels a little bit, and then maybe we take ourselves all the way up onto our toes. Maybe we take the arms up to the ceiling and reach up high as we drop those shoulder blades down. Take those heels down. And take a step back if you need to. We're going to stand heel to toe. One foot comes forward. Balance it like you're walking a tightrope. Maybe we look side to side. And then back to the middle. Switch feet. Find that heel to toe balance. And challenge it a bit if you can. Look side to side. And back to the middle. Let's shift the weight to one other foot. You could lift your heel up using that other foot for a little kickstand initially. Once your weight's over the center front of that supporting ankle joint, go ahead and come up into single leg balance. Come up nice and tall. Maybe we touch the toes to the other lower leg. You could wiggle that knee out to the side of it to challenge your stability. We could come up and down on the toes a little bit. We can switch. Take that foot down. Shift your weight to the middle of the other ankle joint. Find the kickstand, and then we'll take our other foot up. Could wiggle that knee around a little bit. We can take it up and down. Not today, Rachel. <laughs> Take them down, shake out those legs. With those feet shoulder width apart, we're gonna take an ear to a shoulder. And then we'll take the other ear to the other shoulder. Take them back to the middle. Let's roll those shoulders back a bit. Let's soften up those knees. We'll take a big breath in. 
Arms come up, we're gonna clasp those palms, reaching them toward the ceiling and take a tall side bend to each side. And let's go ahead and repeat that. One more time over to one, one more time up and over to the other. Reach those arms to the ceiling. We'll windmill them down by our sides with feet together. One more big breath in. And let's take those hands down to the center. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I hope everybody has a really nice, safe weekend and look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thanks so much.